Hey guys, it's Rosie. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to show you guys how I made this sweater vest. This sweater vest is inspired by one that Harry Styles wore when he released his new album, Harry's House. I made this pattern myself and I want to teach you guys how I make my sweater vest because I've made a lot of them. So I started out by knitting 54 stitches. I knit two by two ribbing, so that's two stitches of knit and two stitches of purl. And you knit that for about two inches. You can make it wider or narrower if you'd like. So once you have two inches, then I knit about another two inches. Again, you can make this wider if you want your sweater to be longer. But then I got ready to start the intarsia part. So that's the pattern that's in brown. So on this particular pattern, it's different if you have a thinner yarn, but with this chunky yarn, you knit 14 stitches. So you start on the knit row, knit 14 stitches, and then you start with the brown. So then you do this first row of brown, and then you continue in white again. By switching, you just introduce the brown yarn, just knit with that and pretend that it is your white yarn instead. It's pretty easy to switch. I'll show you guys in the video. It's a little hard to explain though. You just want the design to be centered, so however many stitches your sweater has, you just try to center it in the middle. So mine was 14 on either side, but yours might be different depending on how big you're making the sweater, which you can just scale up by adding extra on the sides and making it longer too. Just a note about intarsia, so when you're knitting on a knit row, you are knitting from right to left of the garment. So you read from right to left of your pattern when you are switching between the white and the brown. When you're purling, you go from the left to the right of the garment. So therefore you read your pattern from left to right. It can get a little confusing, but once you get the hang of it, it'll work out. Like I'm showing right now, when you switch back to your other color that you abandoned originally, you pull it back in, but you wanna make sure that you leave a decent loop so that it doesn't create a ruffle in your sweater. When you are pulling the yarn, it'll make the stitches bow out to the front. So when you're purling, you keep all of the yarn on your hand side like you normally purl instead of flipping the yarn through from the back you keep it all on one side so that it's on the inside of your garment when you're done you want to keep all of the strings hanging on the back side of your knitting so just make sure here that you're not pulling the strings too tight when you're switching between colors so that it doesn't ruffle your knitting again so this is me starting the very bottom of the house not the steps but the actual like foundation of the house. Once you get the hang of intarsia, it goes together pretty well. It's nice to have a big flat line at the bottom so that you can kind of gauge where each piece of it's going to be without having to completely count everything out right as you're starting. It just really helps to mark up your pattern if you print it out so that you always know where you are in your pattern. But once you got the steps done and you've got this base done, then this is all really gonna come together because you'll be getting the hang of switching between your colors. So here's what the intarsia looks like when it's done. This is all of the house. Obviously I still have to do the hearts later on, but we're starting on the casting off for the armholes. So I cast off right after I finished knitting the house itself, but you can have a couple rows in between before you cast off for the armholes, just in case you want your sweater to be a little longer and to have a little more space between the armholes and the V-neck and the hearts in the sky. So that's really up to you. This pattern is super changeable just based on what size you want your sweater to be. I cast off six stitches on a purl row right after I finished the house and then six more stitches on the knit row following that just to start out the armholes. Then you follow a pattern of decreasing every other row which I will show you in a second. Now it's time to start decreasing on either side and to separate the front to make the v-neck. So first I showed you that I cast off six stitches on either side. Then what you do is you knit two stitches on the next knit row and then you do what's called slip slip knit. So you slip 
your needle through the two stitches, slip it over to the back, and then you knit it through the back. You can also slip them onto the other side, then put the other needle back into the front of them, but you can find better tutorials of how to do this on YouTube. It's kind of more of an in-depth stitch, but it gets the stitches to lay the correct way instead of just knitting two together. So after you slip, slip, knit, you knit 16, then you knit two together at the end, and then you put the remaining stitches on a stitch holder. Once the remaining stitches are on a stitch holder, you're gonna flip the netting over and just work on that half. So you're gonna be decreasing on that half to make one side of the V-neck and also the other armhole. And then you will come back and do the same steps, but on the opposite side. You continue to decrease using knit two, then you do the slip slip knit on knit rows, and then you continue to the end, and on the last two stitches you knit two together, then you purl the next row. You continue alternating a decreasing row with a purl row. Once you get down to 10 stitches, you start on the knit row, so you're casting off five stitches at the beginning, and then you knit the remaining. Then you turn around and you purl and cast off the following five stitches so that that row is slightly taller to make the neck side of the shoulder seam. Once you finish the right side, you can start with the left. So you pick up all your stitches off of the stitch holder and you immediately start by doing a slip slip knit. Just like on the other side, how you ended the row with a knit two together, you're trying to mirror the other side. So you slip slip knit, then you knit to the last four stitches, then you knit two together and then knit the last two stitches and then continue alternating that with purl rows. You're also going to be knitting your heart. So you follow the pattern to use the brown with that. So it gets a little bit more complicated with this side. I guess I didn't take any footage of doing the back, but once you have finished the left side, you just cast off five stitches, then turn around and cast off the next five at the beginning of the next row. Then you make the back. So the back is exactly the same as the front, except you don't split it at the end to make the V-neck. You basically do your ribbing. You have your 54 stitches. You knit up until it is even with your front piece. So now you can base off of the front piece where your sleeve holes should go. You start your decreases, and then I'll show you where exactly the areas are that you start casting off, and then where you're gonna put stitches on a stitch holder to do the ribbing. To make the shoulder seams, you cast off five on each end of the top, and then you cast off five again on each end so that you have a tapered edge, and then you put the remaining stitches onto a stitch holder that we will pick up again in a bit. With the right sides together, you just sew up the side seams and the shoulder seams. Here's what the ribbing looks like on one armhole, and then you can see the contrast of what it looks like before I put the ribbing on on the other side. Let's go do the ribbing. The first step of making the armholes is that you pick up stitches, so you just stick your needle through any loops that you see going around the armhole. I picked up 48 stitches. It just has to be divisible by four so that your knit knit purl purl goes all the way around. It does not have a repeat. Pick up a number of stitches that is divisible by four as you go all the way around the sleep hole. Here's what it looks like when you've picked up all the stitches. So once you've picked up the stitches, then you just start by knit, knit, purl, purl. So it's a two by two ribbing around the sleeve edge, just like you did for the bottom of the sweater. So you continue this. I believe I did four or five rows. It's just basically how wide you want it for your particular yarn and your sweater. The neck edge is much of the same. So basically you just pick up as many stitches as you want around the edge. I think I picked up 20 on each side, plus the stitches that were on the stitch holder. Then you just knit, knit, purl, purl. You just have to make sure the two stitches in the center are knit and then you decrease one stitch on either side of those two knits per row. So here's what the final sweater looks like. I'm so proud of it. I think it turned out really well. I'm just so happy that I found this yarn. I literally got it at Goodwill. It was a whole pack. I think I have enough to make another one of these. I got this brown yarn off of Amazon. I'm so excited to wear this. Obviously this isn't outfit that I'll wear it with but I just wanted to give you guys like a little bit of a taste of it so here's the back it's the front so I'm gonna go outside and take some pictures but I hope this was helpful I hope you guys are able to make your own sweater vests now this one is chunky so you can make it differently 
if you're using like red heart yarn you know like the average size of yarn because this has the average size of yarn plus the mohair substitute that i used i think it turned out pretty well i did scale it down a little bit so that i could use a different yarn and not have it be gigantic so i can link both patterns in the description so you guys can have both of them one for a more chunky yarn and then one for a regular sized yarn thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed seeing me make the sweater vest make sure to follow me on all social media media at Rosie Revolt and check out my Etsy shop also at Rosie Revolt and my book at getoutdoorsbook.com and I will see you guys later. Bye!